say we want to go to the address bar, you go Alt D and that goes to the address bar. If I want to search for something like Jessica Alba, I'm only doing this because it gets more hits, you can search within the address bar. You could also, if you wanted to, go to Control E and go to this search bar in the top right hand corner and search, assuming you've got that installed. If not, just Google Google Toolbar and that's what that is. Next, you can go Alt D to get to the address bar. If I want to go to a website, let's say like Jessica Alba, instead of going www.jessicaalba.com, if I go Control Enter, it puts the www and the .com there already. Someone's parked that one. It doesn't look like Jessica Alba at all. If I'm already in the address bar and I search for something like google.com, if I go Alt Enter, it opens it up in a new tab. So if I search for Jessica Alba here the normal way, I can open up multiple links in different tabs by holding down control. So I control click there, control click there, and there you therefore you can see I've opened up four different tabs for Jessica Alba. And if I go to one of them, if I want to bookmark this one, I can go to control D and I can chuck that in the bookmarks menu or the bookmarks toolbar. I'm going to do a whole separate video on bookmarks as well because they're pretty important. Well, at least I think so. <laughs> if I go back to this original one, if I want to open up a link and switch to it straight away, I can go control shift click and that opens up in a new tab and switches to it straight away. Now if I've got a mouse that has a middle button, usually the scroll wheel, you can actually click the scroll wheel and that acts as a middle button. If I middle button click on this tab, it closes it as well. So I can middle button click on all of these. Now if I didn't have a mouse but I still wanted to go around surfing the internet for Jessica Alba, I could hit tab and what tab does, it'll go through to the different links on the page. So you can see here, I'm up to gallery as an example. Now if I hit enter, it'll act as if I'm left clicking it. And I can keep tabbing as well, just so I'm up to filmography. And if I hit control enter, it'll open it in a new link. Just like the enter button is the left mouse button. I could go control shift enter and it would open up in a new tab and then also switch to it immediately. And by the way, before I told you control enter enters the .com automatically, but if you do shift enter, it does the .net automatically for you. So we can see JessicaAlba.net. All right, trying to get distracted. Let's get back to it. So I'm going to explain working with tabs now. So what you could do is instead of entering all of these pages in a separate tab, you could go Control N and then have them in a separate window. But that's kind of dodgy because then you have you know, seven or eight different windows in your taskbar, which you won't really want. So working with tabs is the preferred option. So let's have a look at some of these shortcuts. So Control T opens a new tab. And then from there, you're in the address bar and you can go wherever you want. Control tab moves forward a tab. And if you're already at the end, it just loops around like that. And then Control shift tab goes backwards a tab. Page down also goes forward. Page up goes backwards as well. Control W also closes a tab. So I can get rid of those ones if I want. And if I've only got one tab open, Control W would actually close the window as well. Um, if you've got a mouse with a middle button on it, middle clicking each of these tabs will close it also. If you accidentally close a tab and you think I want that back up, you can go Control Shift T and it brings up the last tab that was open. And you can go again Control Shift T and restore all those last tabs. Right now I've got how many, let's say seven different tabs open. If I go Control number one, it goes to the first tab, Control number three, etc. All the way to a maximum of eight tabs. And if I hit Control number nine, it always goes to the last tab. You can also drag and drop tabs. So right now I've only got one Firefox window up. If I grab this particular wiki article and I drag it to the desktop, it creates a new Firefox window with this page. And also I can drag and drop tabs from window to window. So if I grab this one here, I can drag it to this window. And this one in there has two. I go Control W to get rid of both of those. You can also drag and drop tabs within the same window. So say I want JessicaAlba.net to go first and drag it there. Okay, so now I want to look at how to view the web page and navigate around it. So if I click Celebrities, instead of hitting the back button, what I can do is go Alt left arrow and that goes back. Alt right arrow goes forward. And similarly, if you've got a mouse with a scrolling wheel thing on it, you can hold down Shift and then go down arrow and that goes back. Shift up arrow goes forward. If I want to go back to the home page, I can go Alt Home 
and that brings me back to my home page, which is Google. All right, I'm going to go back, back to Jessica Alba. If something's ever taking too long on a web page, so let's say I click Trailers, and in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see it load. If I want it to stop loading, I hit Escape, and it stops it. And I go back. And by the way, if your mouse has a back and a forward button, then you can use that instead. If you want to refresh the current page, you can hit F5 and just say it hasn't refreshed and perhaps the website changes you made aren't showing to make sure that it definitely refreshes you can hit control F5 if you want to increase the size of the the text and images on the page you can go control plus so control plus makes things bigger control minus makes it smaller you can also use the the sorry the scroll wheel on your mouse so holding down control and scrolling up makes it bigger and down makes it smaller and if you want to get returned to its normal size that it was originally at, that's control zero. If you want to look at full screen mode, that's F11. So that gets rid of everything, including the, the toolbar and the address bar. If you hit F11 again, it returns back to the normal size. When you're looking at a page, you can scroll down using the down arrow. That goes down a few lines and then up arrow back up. You can also go down a full page by going page down and then page up. You can go all the way to the end by hitting the end button. You can go all the way back to the start by hitting home. If you want to find something on the page, let's say her partner at the time, you go control F and you type in a word like that, Warren. And then to find the next one, you can go alt N or alternatively, you can just hit F3. To find the previous instance of, of Warren on this page, you can go alt P or you could go shift F3 and that would go back up the page. If you just want to highlight all of the ones on the page, you can go Alt A and that highlights all and you can scroll down and you can see where all the different uh, warrens have been highlighted. Like there's one there, a few there, etc. Now if I want to look at my history, I go to Control H and that brings it up and Control H again to get rid of it. If I want to look at my downloads, I can go Control J and then Control J again to get rid of it. Sometimes when you're surfing the net and filling in forms and things, it auto fills it in and remembers what you've done in the past. So if I double click this text box here, you can see I usually log in with accounts and info. If I don't want to have accounts pop up anymore, I can go down arrow and then hit delete. So now when I double click it, only info remains. So that comes in handy when you want to hide stuff from people. Now also if I want to view the HTML of a page, I could right click and go view source, but instead I can use the shortcut control U. And if that confuses you, then don't worry about it, it's just for the geeks. And also standard Windows shortcuts apply, so say if I wanted to go to bookmarks, you can see the B is underlined, or tools, the T is underlined. So what that means is if I hit alt by itself, you can see now file is uh, highlighted, I can hit T to go to tools. And if I wanted to go, let's say, to page info, where I is underlined, I can hit I, and that'll bring me there to page info. I can also hit Alt Space, and that'll get me to the Minimize, Maximize area, which I don't want right now. I can hit Control P to print the current page. I can go Alt F for File, V for Print Preview. That'll bring up the Print Preview screen, and then Alt C to close that, because the C in Close was underlined. Now if I wanted to save the web page for later, I can go Control S and then down the bottom I can select web HTML only if I don't want pictures and stuff. Otherwise if I do want pictures then I can go complete. And then normal copying and pasting shortcuts apply so I can go Control C there and then over here I can go Control V to paste it, etc. If I want to select all the text on a page I can go Control A and then from there I can copy and paste. So thanks for viewing this video. By now, you should increase your browser efficiency by at least 25%. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next video.